Good morning and welcome to our webinar on how to keep your vehicles connected with the impending 3G network shutdown. Today we are going to help you learn about why the 3G network is shutting down, what that means for you, and how you can get your fleet ready. My name is Brittany Wooten, Marketing Manager for eRoad, and I will be facilitating the webinar this morning. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping items. Today's session will consist of a 20 to 25 minute presentation with time dedicated at the end to answer questions. All attendees will be muted for the presentation. But if you do have questions for the panelists during the presentation, just submit them in the question box on the side panel and we'll get to them at the end. If your colleague couldn't make it or you wanna revisit the content at a later time, we've got you covered. We will be recording the presentation today and we'll email that out to you afterwards so you can listen whenever you'd like to refer back to the material. Presenting today, we have three knowledgeable panelists to help you through the transition. First, eRoad's Vice President of Operations, Yasi Alemzada, eRoad Senior Manager of Product Support and Fulfillment, Ken Iyer, and finally, one of our Senior Renewals Team Specialists, Lou Vesta. And without further ado, I'll let Yasi get us started. Thank you, Brittany. Um, Welcome everyone. So what we're gonna talk through today is the upcoming 3G network shutdown here in North America uh, to ensure that, that our eRoad customers are staying connected. Um, so we will cover why the 3G network is shutting down, uh, when it's actually going to take place, how it's gonna impact you, things you can do to prepare and transition over to 4G, and what eRoad is doing to plan for any upcoming future technology changes. So on to the next slide, thank you. Um, so the sunsetting of the 3G network, why, why is 3G network shutting down? Uh, for those of us that have had cell phones for, you know, since they came out, we, we understand that, that our networks have gone through uh, a multitude of changes and improvements uh, for performance and quality. Uh, and that's essentially what this is. So it, it's basically to support um, the, the high data usage that we're seeing in North America and basically get us ready for the next generation of technologies, which is 4G, 5G, and beyond. Uh, so, so with that, we'll see uh, not just with our uh, telematics devices, but with our cell phones as well, some enhanced speed and, and connectivity. The shutdown isn't actually taking place until February 2022 in North America. Uh, however, what's going to happen is that uh, because the, the date has been set for the 3G shutdown, this is going to impact uh, you as an eRoad customer. Uh, if you have a 2.0, eHubbo 2.0 or 2.1, once the network shutdown actually takes place, those devices will no longer work on the 3G network. You will be required to have a 4G compatible unit. Um, that being said, you know, with the date being set of February 2022 for the 3G network shutdown, the maintenance of all of the existing 3G networks have basically halted and we are seeing some degradation and some performance issues in certain areas as it relates to connectivity to the 3G networks. They are just not putting any, any funding or, or maintenance work in repairing any 3G networks. So if a 3G satellite happens to go down, it's unlikely that they will repair it and replace it. So it's that much more important to, uh, to upgrade your devices from 3G to 4G so that your units continue to work uh, as the network shuts down from 3G and moves over to 4G uh, so that you're, you remain compliant um, and minimize that risk. We can go to the next slide, please. So it's super important to, to start planning for that now um, and, and not wait as much as possible. Um, planning ahead is, is going to make you feel a little bit more comfortable in terms of being able to continuously use your device normally um, within regulation and within compliance uh, so that you don't avoid, so that you can avoid service uh, disruptions once the shutdown actually happens. Our team's done a really good job of actually starting to reach out to our eRoad customers um, earlier this year. Uh, it's, it's been a tough year for everyone, but we've done our best to, uh, to begin reaching out to customers that have 3G units so that we can begin the work to swap out those units. Uh, if you haven't heard from any one of our team members here, we have a form that you can fill out, which we'll go through later uh, through the presentation, where one of our team members can reach out to you and talk to you directly about what your options are. There's some updated plan options and some new features that you may not know about that will be available to you with the new uh, 4G units. 
Next slide, please. So I'm gonna pass on to Ken Iyer and he's gonna talk about the, the hardware as it relates to 4G specifically. Ken, over to you. Absolutely, thanks Yossi. Um, so the next couple of slides, I'll just walk through the 4G hardware and then some steps we've taken to kind of ease the pain on the uh, upgrades that you're gonna be uh, starting when you move forward with the 4G hardware. So any 4G hardware is basically any hardware provided by E-Road built in uh, calendar years 2019 and 2020, and that's indicated by the beginning of the serial number, so 0319 or 0320 respectively. Uh, Yasi already alluded to the fact that any 2.0 or 2.1 unit, once the, the network goes down, will no longer operate, and that's all 3G units, and those serial numbers are indicated there, 0300, 0301, and 0318. Um, so when you do a renewal, we're only going to swap out those serial numbers. If you do happen to have any 0319s, maybe it got replaced earlier, that will remain in place because that is a good 4G device. Um, so what are you going to get in the box? You're going to get uh, two main SKUs is what we provide. So we have uh, the 955A and the 950A. And basically, the biggest difference between those is the 950A is designed for quick replacement. So it doesn't include a cable. It's just a simple head unit with the back hatch that uh, makes a really quick swap out. The 950A is just slightly different in that it does include a, a spiral cable attached to it. Maybe you need to replace it or, or, uh, or maybe you just wanna put in all new hardware that is a, able to be provided as well. But they do both come equipped with the back hatch. And really when it comes down to what SKU you're gonna get, we're always gonna try and provide the 955A the only reason you would get the 950A with the cable is if you specifically request it or we're low on stock. But we, we but the biggest thing here is that they're both going to be equipped with that back hatch for ease of install. Next slide. So what does replacing the hardware look like? Um, again, you're going to get one of those two main SKUs, the 950A or 955A. Uh, we provide instructions in the box, which are similar to the uh, little instructions down at the bottom of the slide here. Uh, a couple other steps we do is when the renewal is, is completed, all of your 3G units will go to RMA pending in your E-Road Depot. You'll know that when you look in Depot, they have like a little arrow next to it and they'll show RMA pending. What this does is it frees up the truck in your vehicle and assets list so you can quickly assign the new 4G unit once it's installed. So if anybody's ever uh, worked through an RMA, you've probably experienced this where that the old the old faulty unit is on RMA pending, you install the new unit and it's quickly assigned. Um, so again, instructions are provided and what another step we're gonna take is we're gonna make every effort to update the, the unit to the latest par, uh, firmware release so you're not having to wait through any firmware updates during the install wizard setup process. Um, and then right here is basically, I, admit, I noticed some steps. So uninstall, install, complete, assign, and return is basically the steps you're going to have to take. And again, with that back hatch um, enabled in the 4G device, uh, you're going to be able to quickly replace these units as indicated by the instructions below. So it should be pretty painless. Um, I know some of you have pretty big fleets, so it, it might be a headache to deal with this and concerning, but uh, with the with the enablement of the back hatch, you're not gonna have to go under the dash to renew any cabling or, or replace any cabling unless you desire. So uh, again, we provide the units with the back hatch for ease of install and it should be pretty painless. And, and of course, E-Road's always on standby to assist as needed. Thank you. So I'll, I'll talk about the transition process here. Um, we've set up as, as Yasin and Ken have both said, uh, some some easy ways for you to reach out to us. So obviously give us a call if you're ready to go, the 855-503-7623 number. You can reach one of our renewal specialists at extension one. Um, also, you can shoot us an email at that renewals.us at erode.com. That'll go again to one of our renewal specialists. And then following this uh, presentation, you should receive a form to fill out as well, which again will go um, to us here and we will proactively reach out to you. Once we are in contact with you, we want to review the account. So we want to go over uh, the 4G units that you have, the 3G units that you have, and then any contracts that are eligible um, for renewal or expired um, to clean any of that, that, that up that may be uh, cluttering your depot. So we'd also like to discuss your current plan. Make sure that over the years as E-Road has added new features to each plan that you're aware of those and utilizing them as well as identify 
um, any needs that you may have um, with, with you know upcoming solutions such as cameras, workflow, and asset trackers, um, so that we can make sure that we're offering you everything you need uh, for the success of your business. Um, then finally, we'll review everything and send that over to you for your confirm confirmation, get any contracts that are expired um, renewed, and then we'll ship those 4G units out. We'll also work with you um, with some logistics on the end of that on how long you'll need to make that swap. Um, like Ken alluded to, some of these bigger fleets may have a, a little um, more trouble getting them trucks in and getting things swapped out. So we will work with you on a time frame and, and hopefully allow enough time to get all the units that you have that are 3G transitioned into the 4G uh, hardware. So I think this is going back to you, Yasi. Great, thank you, Lou. So let's talk about the the future of technology shutdowns and 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 what Eroad is doing. Um, first, I, I just want to say that um, you know. Erode in particular, and, and me especially in my role, um, our focus really is to keep our customers at the forefront of everything we do and to be uh, truly customer obsessed. Uh, what that means is that we wanna stay on top of uh, any and all technology changes that, that are upcoming so that you don't have to, right? That's why we're here. We're here to help you, to support you, and to stay on top of all of this so you don't even have to think about it. Um, when we look at the history of network shutdowns as it relates to, uh, you know, 2G and, and before, as, as many of you may remember, historically, those have happened on average about every five to 10 years. So there should be no concern here. It's a, it's a question we get pretty frequently that, you know, what's going to happen when we, when we swap out our 3G for the 4G? When is the 4G network going to shut down? We don't anticipate that shutting down probably until 2030 at this stage. There's been no announcements made uh, and we typically get prior notice. Um, and, and given the life of our eHubbo products, uh, you know, when you, when you swap out the, the 3G for the 4G, you're pretty well set until the next set of, of, uh, of technology comes out with E-Road uh, and, and we'll probably at that point still be uh, realistically on the 4G network. So there's just a little graph here to give you guys an idea, uh, make you feel a little bit more comfortable. If you are still concerned, however, um, you know, Lou, Lou had on the previous slide, had the number, the email, um, and the form that you guys will be sent out. And, and we're happy to chat with you on any concerns that you have over any future technology changes that are coming. Um, so I wanna thank you all, and I'm gonna pass back to Brittany and see if we have any questions. Awesome, great info, everyone. Uh, if you still have questions while we're going through some of the questions that have already been submitted, please submit them in the question box on the side panel. Uh, we'd be happy to answer those during this time. But our first question, are there any other new features on the 4G units that I should be aware of? Ken, maybe that's yeah, I'll you. take that, Brittany. So the biggest thing is that the 4G unit, along with being 4G LTE modem capable, it, it's basically been completely rehauled. So it has all new antennas, all new uh, circuit circuitry inside, a, a, a more robust uh, rechargeable battery. Um, so it's a, basically, it's a complete redesign. The case itself is slightly sleeker. It looks a little bit larger. Um, and then, of course, we, we maintain the back hatch um, and we're, we're happy to provide the technical data sheet upon request and we can put it in with the shipments of the units coming or if you want to peruse that ahead of making a decision, we're happy to provide that on request. Wonderful. Thank you. Our next question, can some of my units be on 4G and others on 3G and still operate similarly? I will take that one, Brittany. Um, so technically, as of today, yes, you can have a, a mix of 4G and 3G units. Essentially, what will happen is on a 4G unit, um, if if a 3G network uh, satellite is not uh, available, but a 4G is, um, it will connect to that network. However, that's not the same case for the 3G. So until the point that the 3G network actually completely shuts down, you technically can have a mixed fleet. However, um, as I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, um, it's quite risky, especially given our regulatory compliance requirements here in North America, um, that if a 3G network does actually shut down or there's some kind of maintenance issue, that 3G unit will not connect to the network and you will be non-compliant. So we highly recommend that um, 
whether or not you, all of your units are 3G or you have a mix of 4G and 3G that you do reach out to us because we will need to swap those out. Uh, and our goal at this stage is to swap all of our customers out by October of 2021. Great, awesome, Great. thank you, Yassi. Our next question, are you able to install the devices or do I need to hire an installer? Great, I'll take that, Brittany. So um, as alluded to on my slide, we make it pretty uh, easy for you to do the install yourself. We understand that um, if you're having uh, personnel in the shop or other people install the units, that they're taken away from other uh, duties that they might have. Although we provide you the ability to do a self-install or a self-swap out in this case, uh, we are always happy to provide assistance where, where it makes sense. Um, we think with you having the ability to know when trucks are going to be coming and going, that um, that that uh, providing you the ability to do the self-install is, is is the best option. And again, we we go through many steps to make that uh, as painless as possible. Awesome. All right. Well, I think those are all the questions we have today. Lou, if you want to go to the next slide, we'll wrap up here. Thank you so much to Yossi, Ken, and Lou for the information this morning. As a follow-up, we will be sending you this recording, the PowerPoint presentation, and a link to the 4G form that Lou mentioned so you can get started with that transition. If you have any other questions, please reach out to our renewals team. The information is here on the screen, and we will also be sending that out in that follow-up email. So thank you all for attending, and have a great rest of your day.